Hey coaches, Coach Simpson coming to you from a new location here in Southside, Arkansas, but I am repping a different shirt. This is my Spencerville <clears throat> Bearcats, a team I was blessed with Coach Gould to go down and spend some time with at Ohio. Go Bearcats, we'll be cheering for you guys as we uh, spend some great time there with Coach Summers and his group. Uh, it was one of, one of my favorite experiences this summer for sure. So YouTube this week, I wanted to talk about offensive tags things that we can do to make our offense a little bit better. Of course, I'm going to use my offense as a baseline, uh, but feel free to take this and use it in whatever offensive scheme that you may use. And so each video will talk about different things we do um, within our offense to make plays a little bit better. If you want more specific information about my offense or exactly how we do it, uh, you can go to fbcoachsimpson.com, search this channel more, you may be able to find kind of what you're looking for. Uh, but I wanted this to be a relatively general video, so anybody running any offense might be able to take something from it and use it. So we're going to talk first about formations and motions, the way you can tag your offense to make it very multiple without being confusing to your kids. Then we're going to talk the next video coming later this week on blocking, way to tag blocking. This is something uh, it's not unique to me, but it's something that I've learned and you may be taking and using your offense as well. And tagging screens and routes. Again, all of this stuff is done probably in most offenses you watch that play on Sunday and on Saturday. It's just how do they do that can be confusing. So I'm going to talk to you real quickly about some of the things that we do with our athletes and maybe that will help you uh, down the road. So for instance, let's talk about formations. So the way we look at formations is we want words to talk to specific players. We are a strong and a quick side of the line, but don't worry about that for right now. So we have a base call that tells our line how to line up. If you're normal, you don't even have to have that word, okay? But we have a call that will tell our Y and our B to go to the right. We use the word red, and our X and our A go to the left. A lot of offenses that are more balanced or 10 personnel may just say, ace or may call whatever they're going to call with it. Don't let that be the point of this video. So we call red, which lets our Y and our B know go to the right and they have a kind of a home formation where they're going to line up for us as a tight end and a wing. Other offenses it may be a tight end and a split or two splits, but they need to have a home position. Position they're going to go when you call your base formation. Our X and our A in a more traditional look, if you're a spread guy, this is probably what you're more comfortable with. That's kind of their home. If they hear red, they go to the left, and they line up on the numbers, on the top of the numbers, and then we are a little bit wider this year, but usually split the difference there. Our F knows by the call to go left. So we have a home position for him. If he hears red, he goes left. So if we start in that world, if we want it, we in our offense will flip all of them. Some offenses, the receivers only play on one side of the ball or the other. We want the ability to move our guys on the right and the left. So red is our right and blue is our left. So if we were to call blue, this would be mirrored. Everybody would go to their home position, but it's on the other side. So our Y and our B would go to the left, our X and our A would go to the right. Hopefully that makes sense. Then as we get to the tags here, we have words that talk to certain people. Now, I'm not going to go all the way through everything we have that tells our guys to move, but I want to give you just a couple examples so you'll know. So we want to move our B. Let's say we want to move him from here out there. Well, we have a word we use, um, and sometimes that word will change, but like for us, that word is pro. So pro only talks to our B. Nobody else listens. They heard red. They line up there, and he's now going to move out here. Okay, if we want to move our B to the trips, we use the word trips. We've used different words in the past. Our general word would be trips. B knows if I hear pro, I go there. If I hear trips, I go here. And now we've been able to create three formations instead of one and have one tag that talk to our B. Then we have words that talk to our A and our F and our X and our Y. I'm going to give you just a couple of small examples. Again, if you want the full complement of what we run, you can go over to my website 
or you can go on a coach tube and find exactly how we call everything and get the playbook that kind of walks through all this stuff. So we want to move a different player. Let's say for this example, we want to move RF. If we don't want him in the backfield, we want him to move out. We say empty. Empty tells him to go to the quick side and line up as a receiver. And now we're in a different formation. We can say empty strong. Empty strong would move him to the strong side of the formation and empty. So it's kind of two tags. Empty strong would put him there. Again, the other 10 players heard their home position, red. The F heard his tag. It moved him. As you start to combine these, it sounds wordy and complicated, so a lot of coaches shy away from it because they don't think their kids can learn it. But if it's taught correctly, it's pretty simple. So for example, let's say we want our F out here and we want our B into the trips. So we would call our, our home red. Then we would call empty strong to move our F. And then we would call trips to move our B. And now we have just gotten into this set. Okay, if we didn't want to move them there, let's say we want to get into, um, you know, we want to get into pro, kind of a tray set, we could say red, pro, empty strong. And now our B is in pro, our F is in empty strong, and we're in an empty tray book. Very, very simple for our kids. He knows empty and empty strong. He knows pro and trips. And now we've created seven or eight formations with one word tags to talk to one player. Every other player on this didn't move. So as you start kind of going down that rule of math where you start multiplying, once you teach those words to your A, your Y, and your X, the possibility of formations by tags becomes up to your imagination. And while you're staying legal, you can do anything you want to with your kids. All of them are learning what talks to them. So it's hard for the coach. I mean, it's a little difficult for the coordinator. But for the kids, they just listen for their tag. Makes it really clean and really simple. Let's talk about motions. We do the same thing with our motions. In our offense, we only motion our off-the-ball players. Okay, so which is the only way you can do it legally. So we tell our Y he's always on the line of scrimmage. Our X is always on the line of scrimmage. We don't move him. So they don't have to learn motions because they don't motion. So we just need words that move our B, words that move our F, and words that move our A. And a lot of offenses have this, whatever verbiage you want, but we have gone with uh, different things year to year. For B, our word that moves him is bus. So if we call it bus, he knows he goes in motion. Okay, I come in motion. Depending on the play, we've kind of built into the play do I motion to the quarterback or slightly past the quarterback? Okay, that's, dep that's dependent on the play call. Our F, motion for him is fly, like flying, flying a bird. And he knows if we call F fly, we're going to move him to empty if he's in the backfield. And if he's in empty, he's going to motion to the backfield. So let's say we went red, fly, he's going to motion out. And now we have an empty formation with motion. Or if he lined up and read empty and said fly, he's going to motion in. And now we're back into kind of our home formation. Again, these are simple, simple tags that talk to one player. But you have to think about it from a defense's perspective. And then from an overall scheme perspective, you know, I just showed by only moving our B and only moving our F, about 10 to 12 formations and if you start motioning with those you're going to cause a lot of problems for a defense and that's just doing two guys you know if you want the full complement of what we're able to do you can get on my website it's in the playbook and you can kind of see how we could theoretically get into whatever formation we wanted to to create problems for a defense next video i'm going to walk through talking about our blocking scheme so how we use tags and blocking schemes, and then our screens and our routes, how we use tags and those to make something that's pretty simple, complicated for a defense, but simple for your athletes. 
Appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't already done so, if you subscribe to the video, I appreciate it. Trying to continue to grow this channel throughout the season. Hopefully I have two or three videos a week.